Hello there everyone, so good to see you. Welcome to a kind of off-the-cuff analysis of the newest, first trailer, honestly, of Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. I can't believe I'm actually saying this because this game's been in development for so long. Seven years ago, we had the first announcement, it was just a title. Five years ago, they restarted development, and in, in those five years, we've seen basically nothing of this. So seeing it now, it is so surreal. And uh, there's a lot of games I want to talk about from the most recent Direct. There's Mario & Luigi, there's uh, Legend of Zelda, where you play as Zelda. But I want to talk about Metroid Prime 4, because I think that one is what resonates with me the most right now. Uh, seeing it again after all this time. And so we're going to do a little bit of an analysis here. I'm just going to go through the trailer once. Uh, we're going to point out some things here and there. But after the first run, we're going to go a little more in-depth with the things that I've noticed. And with that, um, I'm going to be a little bit quieter because my voice is kind of a little bit shot right now. <laughs> I'm not, but I really wanted to get something out there to get some thoughts on Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. So let's go ahead and just start this trailer and see what we're in for real quick. Let's give it one good look around. Cosmic Gear 2... Uh, Cosmic Gear 29X Galactic Federation Research Facility. And then we knew right away before it even said... <laughs> before it even said Galactic Federation... That this was Metroid Prime 4. Unbelievable. No matter how many games I see, no matter how many Metroid Prime games I see, the shot of them is getting out of her gunship, loading up her arm cannon, and then the zoom here into first person, it's always iconic, no matter how many times I see it in any game. And it just looks amazing. You can see there's... This doesn't look like a Switch game at all. This isn't even... I mean, we were looking at Metroid Prime Remastered the other, just last year, and that looked like it was just beyond what the Switch was even capable of. And even this right now, it's a step above that. And we got all the, the basics. We got Sam's with her arm cannon shooting up, shooting things up, the, the scan visor, the morph ball, the charge beam we're going to see right now, with the same sound effect too. And of course, Space Pirates and the return of Silex after all this time. The buildup of Silex from Metroid Prime Hunters to the way that he was shown off in Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, Metroid Prime Federation Force. Is it actually going to mean something now? And then of course, oh my gosh, this right here. If this is the music for this area, oh my gosh, we're gonna go, we're gonna go from using Finjana drifts to whatever this song is in all of the YouTubers' background music. And yeah, 2025, we are potentially just a full year away from this game. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and go a little bit slower this time through this playback, just so we make sure we catch everything. So right here. Right off the bat, Cosmic Gear 20X9. This does not take place after the original trilogy of Metroid Prime. If you all happen to be familiar with the Metroid timeline, it goes Metroid 1, and then Metroid Prime Trilogy happens. 1, 2, 3, Hunters, Federation Force. That all happens after Metroid 1 and before Metroid 2, Return of Samus. And then after that is when the timeline continues onward with Super Metroid, other M, Metroid Fusion, and then Dread. But the thing is here, Cosmic Gear 20X9 is two years after Super Metroid, which takes place in Cosmic Gear 20X7. So Metroid Prime 4 Beyond is removed from the original placement of the Prime series between Metroid 1 and 2. And it does make sense to start this somewhere else because now that whole Phazon arc is over. There's no more Phazon, there's no more Metroid Prime, which is funny now we're calling it Prime 4 Beyond. It does make sense that we are now in a new timeline altogether because now the Metroid Prime was essentially the Phazon arc and the arc of Metroid Prime itself. Uh, there's no more Prime, there's no more Dark Samus. They were il completely eliminated at the end of Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. So it does make sense that now we're going beyond, as it were, into a new story and timeline. This one following more specifically as we're going to talk about later on with Silex. And so at the beginning of this game, Samus is called upon the Galactic Federation to assist in a battle that they're already having. And this is really unique. Uh, before we get talking about the battle itself, uh, the gunship is the same as what we saw in Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. Um, I always appreciate Samus always keeping up with the trends of gunship technology. Uh, the gunship looked different in 1 and 2. 
it had the more like dome like design but this one definitely has the prime 3 aesthetic it's a little bit different and so is the suit just a little bit different from then but it does follow that core concept of design as we're seeing right now the gunship is being ordered to fly away which is something that we did a lot with metroid prime 3 the gunship was actually its own utility uh you could use it to move things across the map and also to ferry you from one planet to the other so it looks like the gunship will play a more active role here as well as you move from biome to biome or planet to planet and as samus is ordering the gunship to fly away we get a good look at the various suit right here um it looks very close to the prime 3 design as well from corruption uh, just like with the gunship, some minor tweaks here and there. The main one I think we noticed from Prime 1, which most people are probably familiar with now, is that the shoulders are a lot smaller. Not way smaller, but the shoulders are a fair bit smaller now. I, I remember they're like almost twice the size of her head <laughs> in the original Prime or something like that. But yeah, essentially every Metroid game gives some kind of distinction to her suit in one way or another, but we're staying pretty classic here. Nothing too different like what we see with Metroid Fusion or Metroid Dread. We get that like very iconic mission start theme and we zoom right into the helmet, into the HUD and right away we see, yep, this is a Metroid Prime game. And immediately what we see right there, before we go off to talk about everything around us that's happening with the UI and whatnot, we're just thrown into a battlefield. This has not happened before in a Metroid Prime game. Usually like, especially with Prime 1 and Prime 2, uh, the places that you arrive at, Forget Orpheon and the Galactic Federation base in, in Prime 2 Echoes, like they've already had their battles there. There's corpses lying everywhere, it's all messed up, and it's kind of an ingenious way to do a tutorial because those enemies are a lot weaker and there's not as much stress to take care of them. But here, we're in the battlefield already. Um, we're already fighting space pirates right away. We get a pretty good look at the space pirate design from both the front and the back. You can see that there's other Galactic Federation Force members from this side fighting and we're gonna flank them over here. But yeah, this base is already being just absolutely demolished by the space pirates and we don't know why that is in this case. But I'm assuming Samus was called for emergency backup. But yeah, if you recall Metroid Prime 3 Corruption, uh, there are some space pirate ships, like little carrier ships that look a lot like this. And this one here is dropping like bombs right on the base of the Galactic Federation. And there's other people, these guns are shooting, turrets are being fired, uh, other ships are flying around, explosions are happening. There's so much happening right now. Space pirate ships are flying around. Whatever this massive one is, like whatever this ship is, I guess it's like their mothership, which got a heavy blow right there from that explosion you just saw. Um, it's, it's a lot. There's a lot more happening in this than before. And, uh, environmental design looks amazing. The flames here, whatever, whatever happened here, I have no idea what happened, but, oh man, this guy right here, uh, poor guy. The scan visor is back. I was more excited about this than I probably should have been. Uh, scanning the dead corpse or almost to be dead corpse of space pirates and other enemies and other friends even that have been at just assaulted in battle. Subject is heavily injured with reduced combat ability, internal organ failure, and biofluid hemorrhage confirmed, vital signs weak and deteriorating rapidly. So he's still alive. You know, he's, he's, he's still hanging in there. He's not dead yet, but my goodness, I, I you could probably shoot him and put him out of his misery if you, if you wanted to. That's a little sad, but man, they're back. Scans that depict horrible, gruesome deaths, they're back again. Oh man, those are my favorites. Like the one with, uh, was it Metro Prime 1 or 2? The space pirate that experimented with Morph Ball technology and it went horribly wrong. And then the, very comedically, without trying to be funny, uh, the log says that basically, uh, we're not gonna try this again. We're probably not gonna do it. <laughs> Just imagining the space pirate getting crunched into a fake Morph Ball. Uh, but anyways, yeah. Scan visor with some amazing looking um, art on each side as before. Samus takes one shot, morph balls very fluidly into here. We have a, we have some, some shenanigans going on down here. It looks like these space pirates are trying to break in while one is defending the doorway on this side. Um, they're trying to pick a lock it looks like while Samus is being all sneaky sneaky up here. You can apparently exit from this side, from this vent. So I wonder if there's different options for uh, different paths to take. So if you want to keep going down this this railway here, which Samus does, or if you want to just take this path instead and just literally get the drop on these guys. Actually, now that I look at this again, uh, if you go back, 
just for a moment. Uh, no, they're planting a bomb there. That's what they're doing. They're not picking a lock. They're planting a bomb. So when Samus goes across to the other side of the door, you see that bomb explode and burst that door open. And then these those same three space pirates come back out and the Galactic Federation force is trying to defend as well. There's like someone here trying to carry off a... I don't know what this is. Is it like some kind of weapon? They're trying to they're trying to get something from the Federation Force, and I wonder what that is. Obviously, also energy tank right here. It doesn't look like Samus can get it right away. Oh, it, it ends off too short. I wonder if you can just use a morph ball bomb. Maybe that's one you're supposed to get as you're going through this vent, and then you end up somewhere off this side somewhere. But yeah, this is a full on invasion. You know, uh, Metroid Prime Three Corruption also had like a very active battlefield, and that felt good. You know. Actually being in the front lines with the Federation Force, um, even though they, they've done some shady things. But at this point in the story, like you felt good helping the other hunters over there as well and just defending. So this is the first time we're seeing like active action happening with other humans <laughs> at the same time since corruption. And then this whole pod comes down, deliver. Oh, okay, so maybe that's what that was too. What we saw outside. Um, what was that? So... Maybe that's what this was here. These these kind of coney looking pods. Okay, yeah. Those dropped down. Those pods were dropping down. There were three of them. And I think that's what this was here. A real good close look at it. Was it comes down and then it delivers these guys. Because yeah, that was a carrier ship. And then you get some real basic combat. The Federation Force is helping you out here. How nice of them. Samus starts off with all her basics, the charge beam, the power beam, missiles, you see missiles on the UI here as well, the morph ball. Got some motion capture going with that dodge roll in the cinematic. We got some more space pirates coming, and then the man of the hour himself, oh my goodness, it is Silex. Amazing. To finally see this after all this time, Silex's little story that they started in Metroid Prime Hunters on the DS, and then following Samus's starship from Metroid Prime 3 Corruption at the very end when you get like 100% everything. And then when you finish that one secret mission, it was shown that Silex was taking the Metroid larva at the very end of uh, Metroid Prime Federation Force. And now we see, this makes sense now, but there's two larva here because these two Metroids, uh, they're not Metroids. These are in fact not actually Metroids. These two are Mocktroids. And if you remember Mocktroids from Super Metroid, uh, they do resemble Metroids, but they are actually just uh, like inferior clones. They're, they're the, the space pirates were trying to clone Metroids, and this is what they made. They made Mocktroids, which are a lot weaker than the actual Metroids. Uh, you can tell the difference because they have like the single like nucleus brain inside. It's just one. It looks off, right? The actual classic Metroids, they have like three or more of those nuclei, those little brains inside. So this is, these are not actual Metroids, they're Mocktroids. And that makes sense here because Silex is partnering up with the Space Pirates who are only capable of cloning these Mocktroids. And believe it or not, I think just the presence of these Mocktroids is helping to explain a mechanic in the game that we have not seen yet. So unlike actual Metroids, uh, Mocktroids, they don't have like that strong, powerful grip that the regular Metroids do. So when they grab onto you, Samus needs to become a morph ball and bomb the Metroids off of her. Samus can actually just remove a Mocktroid by just moving around and shaking it off, which leads me to believe that perhaps in Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, they're going to incorporate what was introduced in Metroid Samus Returns, and also used again in Metroid Dread, the physical counter with the arm cannon. I feel like there is so much potential to use that in a 3D space, in a first person shooter no less. And there's just so much room in the gameplay to utilize that, so maybe when a, when a mock trade latches onto you, you can just bash it right off of you. Or imagine, you know, that terrifying feeling when any Metroid is starting to, to lunge towards you. If you time it just right, you can bash them and stun them. That feels like it could be a very good mechanic that you can apply easily to so many enemies in this game. And I can easily see Samus needing to fight these Mocktroids early on at the very beginning of the game because they're not that strong. Uh, you don't need an Ice Beam and a Missile to destroy these in a few hits. Uh, they're, they'll go down fairly easily. But everything is just looking so good and beautiful. Look at that visor. You can also see Silex's reflection right here. That's a that's a really good shot right there. And just to see the amount of detail in the suit as well. Oh, it's, it looks so good. And then the logo. Oh my goodness, we finally got... <laughs> I've been waiting so long to see a new logo instead of just... War. 
for the last five, six, seven years. Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Um, this iconography, it looks like an eyeball, doesn't it? Um, I'm wondering what kind of significance this plays, if at all. The original Metroid Prime trilogy had that iconography behind um, the, the logo. Metroid Prime, in particular, the first one, had that S shape, the one that looks like a screw attack that just pretty much defines the logo, the symbol of Metroid and Samus. Although they did remove that S for other Prime games, like Hunter and Echoes, and then Metroid Prime 3 just didn't have it at all. It had a, a different visual for the phase on look. So yeah, I'm wondering if this like iconography, if this symbol in the background is going to play some kind of significance. Uh, I don't know just yet. It's a little too early to say, but it's a nice logo. I'm loving the purples and pinks here. And then of course we got the very first look at what it probably is one of the very first locations in Metroid Prime 4 Beyond. Uh, very lush and green environments, unlike anything that we really have seen before. We've got like Talon 4 for Metroid Prime 1. We've got um, Corvus Bog for Metroid Prime 2. But those are very stormy and wet, like they're, they're wetlands. They're not really as lush and green and tropical as this place is. Uh, there's some places like that in other games, but this is like very jungle-like. We've never really explored an area like this before, especially in the Prime series. Um, massive trees that are giving you all this shade from down here. Uh, just overgrowth of trees and wildlife everywhere. There's natural birds just flying around. There's a bridge over here. So there's some man-made structures here as well. So there is, in fact, civilization. It's not just a random planet that happens to have wildlife and Metroids, probably. <laughs> um, but yeah, that is there. And I wanted to also bring up real quick in that first shot. It doesn't seem like Samus arrived here by normal means. This looks like some kind of portal of some sort, unless it's like just a tunnel and way back there is the light source. But this seems like some kind of portal that she went through to get to arrive here. So I'm wondering what this is all about. But yeah, you can see this is just the kind of first area you run around and explore. Waterfalls, the pathway opens up over here to see. I wonder what's beyond this area. And of course, the music that's playing in the background. This sounds like, as I mentioned earlier, this is going to be the soft, lovely piano music that we haven't heard since like Finjana Drips of Metroid Prime 1. And yeah, that's going to be in the background of all my videos going <laughs> at some point. It doesn't really feel real, you know, after waiting so many years of just no news of being told only that it was in production all over again from starting from scratch and then to just hear nothing for five years. It's surreal to see anything on this game, visuals, gameplay, all of it and yeah it's, it's just something that i've been waiting for for so long i love metroid prime um the, the very first metroid prime on gamecube that's how i got into the series that was my first introduction and then i went back to play all the metroid games that came before it and after it there really is something different and special about this series like metroid just stands out so much for me compared to all the other ips of nintendo uh, all the first party ips from zelda Star Fox, mario kirby like there's just a different feel uh we can talk about the ui and stuff now too uh, i thought it was weird and interesting that the missile launcher is on this portion of the ui uh on the bottom left usually you have your visors and over here would be your beam cannons but you only have one right now of course this is the very beginning of the game so this makes me wonder if perhaps from this UI here, if you hold down a certain button, that will change Samus's arm cannon to shoot that weapon out. So much more like Super Metroid, right? If you hold that down, then you would be able to shoot missiles. And if you let go, you can shoot your other beam again. There's no other beam options over here in the corner, which makes it seem a little bit more like Metroid Prime 3 Corruption. But yeah, everything looks just so clean here. We've got the classic map up here in the corner with uh, directional points as well pointing northwest at this area and up here you have the proximity map for enemies so yeah this guy that's just hanging on here uh apparently according to this you can in fact shoot him and put him out of his misery or, or so it seems i know what i'm gonna do i'm sure at the very beginning of the game there's probably gonna be a bit more of a tutorial for people that don't know or haven't played much of prime before but they just kind of remove that for the sake of the cinematics of the trailer here itself but yeah it's I, oh my goodness it looks so good the last thing I wonder if is Samus is going to lose any of her abilities at the beginning of the game. Uh, at least the basic ones you have here, like Missile Launcher, Morph Ball, and whatnot. Which I hope not. Uh, with every Metroid Prime game, she kind of seems to retain more and more as time goes on. Like with Metroid Prime 2, you actually started off with the Morph Ball. 
uh, Metroid Prime 3, you had pretty much all the basics from the get-go. So hopefully uh, we keep all those power-ups here and we have room to earn more and unique and different ones because there's not really anything new in the gameplay that we saw here. All of Samus's abilities have been things that we've seen before uh, from, from locking on, scan visor, charge beam, morph ball. So it's really gonna be something to look forward to with the next trailer to see just what has changed with Samus' moveset and what sets this apart from the other Metroid Prime games because you can't just make this for the last five years after restarting development and not have anything look, you know, unique that lets it stand apart. So that's why, that's why I'm hoping that we're gonna get more physical combat in this game as well. And of course, one more thing, uh, the release date of 2025, if we're getting it next year, it is very likely that since it was announced here at this Direct, we're also going to be seeing it be a cross-gen title with the Switch 2 once that gets announced as well. Do not be surprised if we see Metroid Prime 4 Beyond in the reveal trailer that shows off what the Switch 2 actually is. But yeah, that's exciting to think about. That pretty much wraps up my little Opticuff analysis of this. Thank you so much for listening and watching. Um, I, as you might be able to tell, I am very excited for this game. Uh, we, we finally see it, it looks beautiful. It's, it's, look at this, it's gorgeous. I cannot wait to play this when it comes out. And you're probably gonna be seeing some more discussions and talk of this and other games that were announced at the Nintendo Direct for June, 2024. But until then, thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you like what you saw here, please leave a like, please subscribe. We appreciate any little bit of support you can. We're on Patreon, and you can find me on Twitch on Tuesdays and Thursdays once I finally get my voice back. <laughs> Take care, everybody, and stay tuned for what's to come on the channel. Till we meet again.